So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 one week later. Now I believe this is the most productive phone ever released to mankind and I want to tell you why that is in this video. Alright guys, so one week later, let's talk about why I believe this might be the most productive phone ever made. I'll come to that conclusion by the end of this video, but I want to begin by talking about my one week later experience with the screen here, the front, the cover screen. So the cover screen, I can tell you right away, it's definitely not the more premium screen on here. It, it kind of reminds me of one of the Galaxy S20 FEs or maybe even the A series in quality. It's not the sharpest, but it is very, you know, smooth with the 120 Hertz panel here. It's super easy to one hand. So let's go to the Play Store. And yes, the keyboard is small, but I would argue that most people are gonna be able to type with one hand on here. So let me put, you know, a game for example. I was trying to put a raid. Let me put a game, a game for example. And you'll see it was just really easy to just type that thing out with one hand. And I so I really do like that. Also, quick tip if you're a little bit concerned about that, go to the three dot menu over here, go to keyboard size. It will start about there, so it'll be really tiny. So just go over here, keyboard size, drag it up, and you instantly have a little bit of a larger keyboard. Now I will say that when you are typing, your thumbs can bump here on the front screen a little bit, but you will get used to it and then you'll start to appreciate, you know, just this little screen on the front is just kind of useful on the move. It is 6.2 inches, but it's very narrow. So the inside screen is where, you know, dreams start to come true. Like, oh, oh my, I got, I got a tablet in my pocket? Yeah, you do. But one thing I want to mention one more time about that cover screen before we head up out of there is that that cover screen is the more durable screen because it has Gorilla Glass. In addition to that, it doesn't have S Pen support. However, that doesn't ruin the productivity because I wouldn't ever really want to be typing or writing on a little tiny screen like this. However, I think it would be nice to just navigate it. So I hope Samsung does bring S Pen support on the front, at least for scrolling and stuff like that. So the second thing I want to talk about is durability. And trust me, they are starting to nail it here with the durability. It's so refined when you open it up, you, you won't really notice. See, the thing with the Z Fold series is that it's hard to explain it behind camera. You actually have to get this phone in your hand and actually play with it, use it. This is one of those phones. I can't just talk and tell you and show you. You have to use it. It's, it's got a feeling type of thing. Whereas other phones, you could kind of look and be like, yeah, I like that iPhone. I like that Samsung Galaxy phone. I'm gonna buy that phone right now. This one is one of those where you have to do a little more thinking. You have to go to the store. You have to play with it, feel it, feel it out and be like, yep, that's for me. It's one of those kind of phones. It's so tight now that when you go ahead and open it, sometimes you'll be like this because you didn't put enough pressure to open it. It's very solid and it just feels so good when you are opening it up. So definitely, and it does have these different angles where you could kind of hold it like this. You could do this on the Z Fold 2 as well but really just feels ultra durable compared to the previous versions. Also, the screen protector on the inside is also holding up better than the Z Fold 2s already. And the one on the front is also quite good as well, although I do think that it will get a little bit scratched up over time. I do notice that on this black one right here, I am getting a little bit of scratching already on these this paint over here. It's really tiny. I'm not sure if you could see it, but I've already nicked it right about there. So you can definitely nick the paint off of this one and maybe the green one as well. So if you, you're a little bit worried about that, you might wanna go with the silver version. One week later, the slightly lighter weight is also appreciated of the Galaxy Z Fold 3. It's just been a joy to you know, have a little bit less weight than the prior version. This is the trending in the right direction. We want this thing to be compact, but also very, you know, big inner display. That's really a good thing. I wanna now talk about the inner display crease because that seems to be a topic of contention. Some people will say that it's gotten better than the Galaxy Fold, the original version. I don't really notice it that much, getting much better. It's still a crease and it's definitely visible on angles like that. And let me tell you, it's not photogenic. In video, it looks absolutely terrible. I mean, look at that. Would you wanna, do you wanna look at that? But who's gonna be reading their phone like that? Now watch what happens when I do bring this phone straight on. It basically disappears. You don't even notice it anymore. So if I am gonna open up, you know, an application or something like that, or read some stuff like this, you can see it's kind of gone. Let's go ahead and go over to Google News really quickly here. Let's head over there. Let's go to uh, right here, tech news, Google news, headlines. We'll go over here to technology. And you'll see once you're straight on looking at your content, which you're probably gonna be doing anyway, and you're gonna be reading articles and stuff like that, 
you'll see that it just kind of goes away. You don't really even notice it. And in video, you'll be too distracted with your video that you won't even be looking at this stuff. When you are in direct sunlight outside, you will notice it quite a bit. And then you'll kind of see how the display on the inside is plastic and the sunlight as well. But when you're outside, I would definitely recommend just using it this way. The phone's more durable this way as well. All right, so what I also like about the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is that they brought the same features over from the Galaxy Fold 2, where you kind of just, you know, you can prop this up like a tripod, take your photo really quickly, and then you can kind of check it out right here. Also, I like that cover, you know, selfie. So you can use this one right here, flip the phone around this way, and you get this amazing camera in the front. So I definitely enjoyed this as well. This was also, again, on the Z Fold 2, but these cameras are darn good on this phone. They went toe to toe with me for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So definitely very good. And you're probably not gonna beat the selfies on this phone due to this one using the rear camera to get those results. Now the trade-off is that you have this weak inner camera here, pretty weak sauce because it's under the display. I'm never using this camera. I don't. I wish it wasn't even there, to be honest. If you're gonna put a camera this bad, just get rid of it. Like, we don't need it. Like, you know, I'm just not feeling this. I can understand for conference calls and stuff like that, but even this, I'm not gonna be doing conferences on a weak camera like that, so I don't know. Maybe they can just find a way to get this camera to be higher quality underneath the display. That would probably be the better improvement. And yeah, you can see pixels a little bit when you are using the phone right here. If you get close enough, you'll see a little bit of pixelation right there. And you know, it kind of just becomes a visual illusion. You kind of just stop looking at it after a while and you don't even care at that point. So it's not gonna deter me from recommending you this phone right here, that little camera being weak sauce and being a slight visual distraction. It's not gonna stop me from recommending this device. Next up is the multitasking. The multitasking is absolutely amazing on here. Like you can do so much with the multitasking on here. It's pretty insane. You know, you have triple applications. You can move them around like crazy. You also have the pop view windows like you've had before. So if I go over here, I could pop view this right here. Then I can go ahead and get another application in here. Let's go to the Play Store. I could pop view that. You'll have a list of them right there. You can move them around. And I've talked about this before on Samsung devices before, but this one is finally like big enough where it's kind of actually useful. So that's a big deal. This thing is only challenged by the likes of the Surface Duo when it comes to multitasking because that is a dual screen phone. Other than that, there's nothing on the block really challenging this phone in multitasking. Even regular phones, it doesn't seem quite as useful as it does here on the Galaxy Z Fold. And believe me, you will be using this like a pro pretty quickly. It's not that hard to use this phone right here. I was looking at an Audi real quick. Let's go ahead and split the screen right quick and you'll see Definitely can split it with all these applications and let's see if we can calculate the cost through 27,587. Maybe there's $3,000 in tax. Just a quick example, right? So 30,587, but you could see right here, just the ability to multitask is pretty neat overall, I will say. Definitely pretty strong. All right, so the next one is the S Pen. Now I gotta say this solution right here horrible solution everybody's saying it and you know i have to agree because when this case this s pen case that samsung is including or not including but you have to buy separate with this phone but it's pretty much a necessary add-on if you want to have the s pen everywhere you go it looks nice don't get me wrong but it is a horrible solution for you know look at this when you close the case really quickly it'll kind of do this really quick where you you can kind of see half the phone so it doesn't really fit on there perfectly so you gotta kind of get on there, but at least it does trigger the screen to unlock when you do unlock it. The thing is, is that when you lay this flat on a table, let's go ahead and lay this flat on the table. You see that right there? So this S Pen implementation, especially with this case, not the best. You can also just kind of take this off the back of there like that, and then the case becomes a little bit more flat, but why would I want to do that every single time? Now, when I take this out of here, the S Pen itself is designed for the fold specifically. So when you are writing with this fold, definitely feels very nice. Can you feel the crease? Yes, if you are writing over the crease, you can kind of feel it go over that crease as you would with your finger, but there is no problems with the S Pen going through it. There's not gonna be any lines missing or anything like that. They have got that down packed. And if you get the S Pen Pro, you will be able to do like the all, all those extra actions like you could do on the Galaxy Note. But look at all these features here, smart select, screen write, live 
live messages, doodle, translate, pen up. And really, if you're gonna be doing artistic things, drawing and stuff like that, look at the canvas here on this mobile device here to do that stuff like live drawing and the like. So there's a lot you can do with this S Pen. Personally, I jot down notes like you can see right there, put the widgets on the screen. In addition to that, what I will do is I will use Write on Calendar, which is right here. I'm not gonna go to my calendar, but I do that quite a bit. And then you can use this magnifying tool as well if you're having issues seeing certain things on the screen, which you shouldn't for you know a phone like this. In the settings, you'll see there's quite a bit of features here for this regular S Pen even. Screen off memo, you have quick create notes, S Pen to text, air view, show pointer when hovering. You know, there's quite a bit. Also, you can do this thing where you can do S Pen to text. So when you are using the S Pen, let's go to the Play Store, let's look up Facebook. You can use this to write in text fields and search fields like that, and then it will be able to, you can write the text in search fields. So you can kind of, I've seen that on the iPad before, but you can do it here as well now for the Z Fold 3. So my issue with the S Pen is that it doesn't slot into the phone anywhere. You know, I wish it would go into the phone, but other than that, I absolutely love it. And quite honestly, I do think this is a terrible case just because of the way, you know, flops around and stuff like that. I wish it was a better implemented, but I still love what it provides. The S Pen is an invaluable tool if you're gonna take advantage of it. Thing becomes the most productive mobile way to go ahead and write down notes. I mean, you can take this everywhere in your pocket. Week later, the performance has also shocked me. How good is the performance on this thing? Snapdragon 888, 12 gigs of RAM. This is probably the fastest Samsung phone I've ever used. Up there with the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is equally as fast. This thing does not choke no matter what you are doing. I don't care what it is, you will not get this phone to choke. And having that 120 hertz on the front and on the inside makes the performance feel very consistent across the device that leads to a more refined feel. And the battery life for this phone hasn't been overly impressive one week later, but it's good enough. It gets me through the day and I just throw it on the charger when it needs some juice. And I will say when you have the screen open like this, you will drain quite a bit more battery. So think of it like this way. If you're going off to work or you're going to do something and you, you have it, you're just using the front screen, the battery should last quite a bit. And then when you're at home or when you have some time and you open up this cover screen, you'll probably not be too concerned about the battery life because you might not use it that long. And if you're at home and you're gonna really dive into your own world and get into the phone itself, you'll probably be near a charger anyway. So I'm gonna say the battery life is nothing impressive, but it does make it through the full day, which is what matters, I would say. And I will say that from 100 to 90, just like other Samsung phones, this thing just depletes ridiculously quick. You'll see it drop by the percentages. Once it gets under 90, it just creeps down. So definitely that 100 to 90, Samsung, you gotta figure this out. So with the cameras, one week later, we talked about these quite a bit. I've already compared it to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I gotta say, I'm very happy with these cameras. You have the ultra wide angle, can go up to 10X. You can do most of what the S21 Ultra can do, at least in the more features mode. You have the director's view, just like the S21 Ultra. The only thing we're missing here is the better lenses, the you know longer zooms. So I would like to see the longer zooms on this phone. If they get the longer zooms going and you know improve the overall lenses to be like maybe the 108 megapixel, we might have ourselves a Galaxy Z Fold Pro. So let's bring it all together. You have an S Pen for tablet interior writing as well as you know writing on calendars, getting your productive stuff done. You have a regular phone on the front of this display. You have a 120 hertz screen, which is often found on only flagship grade devices. Then if you open this up, you have a 120 hertz tablet on the inside. You have a durable device now that is definitely reminding me more of what you would get on something like a more premium flagship grade phone. Although not quite there, it's getting there. You have cameras that rival some of the best on the market. Not saying they are the best, but they definitely rival it. You have huge storage option of 512 gig. Why this phone is so productive is because I can do all of my multitasking in here. Most of what I would do on a tablet on the inside very quickly, very smoothly. And with the addition of the S Pen, you can get even more productive with writing and stuff like that. And then this phone becomes a solid phone on the front when you're out and about. This really is replacing the need for a tablet 
and a phone in one. It's doing that now. And it's doing it at a level that is finally usable and it doesn't feel like a first generation product. I'm impressed. 